what's going to happen is going to be similar to the super thread circle. There are going to be things that are very, very analogous to that. But let's start with how do we measure the distance between a point and a line? And the answer is, uh, we could go to the from the point to a point on a line in many different ways, but let's pick the shortest one, which is the perpendicular. So the distance between a point and a line is defined to be the shortest distance between a point on the line and the point, which is uh, the perpendicular. That's one thing. All right. The next definition is, you remember the perpendicular bisector was yeah, it's it's goes through the midpoint and it's perpendicular to the line segment, but the definition was a strange one. It said the set of all points equidistant to the endpoints of the line segment. Kind of a strange way to define it. There's gonna be something very similar to this. So given an angle, the angle bisector is the set of all points in the plane that are equidistant to the two rays forming the angle. Ray is just a fancy word for half of a line, I guess. It has a beginning and no end. So these two rays form the angle. And then the angle bisector, again, the definition could have been a little bit more straightforward, like cut the measure of the angle in a half. But instead, any point you pick on this um, angle bisector, these two distances are going to be the same, which makes my picture a little clumsy. Uh, these are all congruent right triangles. Um, these two and these two and these two and so on. So that's the definition. And then the fun begins. Let ABC be any triangle. And we're going to draw in the angle bisector for two angles. Let L1 be the angle bisector of angle alpha and L2 be the angle bisector of angle beta. And let P be, let P be the intersection of those two lines. That should sound familiar. We did the intersection of two perpendicular bisector very, very similarly. I kind of feel like constructing it, but let's maybe afterwards. So let's, let me just draw it. And so here is our point P, L1, L2. So because our point P is on the first uh, angle bisector. That means that the distance from here, the distance of this point from side AB and side AC are the same. But this point is sitting on another angle bisector of beta. So that means that these two blue distances that I'm coloring in are also equal. And now you see all three of these lines are equal to each other and they're perpendicular to these sides. So there are two consequences of it. One immediate consequence is if this point is equally far from side AC and side BC, then it will also sit on the third angle bisector. So the angle bisectors two intersect each other in a single point, similarly to the perpendicular bisectors, right? And the perpendicular bisectors determine the circle that contained all three vertices of the triangle. This one, this point is the center of what we call the inscribed circle. It's a circle whose all three sides are a tangent line to it. And that's called the inscribed circle. Every triangle has it. Basically, just intersect two angle bisectors and that's the center of the circle. Then you will have to worry about how big the how big the radius is, but that's pretty much it. We're gonna construct it. Um, usually I use capital R for the radius of the superscribed circle or circumscribed circle and little r for the inscribed circle. And before I construct it, just for fun, let me show you one theorem that's kind of useful. There is lots of lots of theorems and formulas about the superscribed circle, not that many about the inscribed. Notice that the lines that I'm drawing in, those are the angle bisectors. So we're gonna find the area of this triangle 
in a different way that's going to enable us to find the radius of the inscribed circle. Now, the red triangle's area is A times R over 2, because a, if A is the base, then the, the height of this uh, triangle is the radius of the inscribed circle. Very similarly, this other triangle, the blue triangle's area is base times height over 2. The base is B, the height is little r, and over 2 is the same. And finally, the third one is C times R over 2, right? C times R over 2. And so now the area of the triangle, which can be found in all kinds of ways, especially if the area, if the triangle is right, right, or isosceles, we already know how to find the perimeter and the and the area. So the area of this four triangle is the three areas added, which is one half R times A plus one half R times B plus one half R times C. And if we factor out one half R, what's left in the parentheses is just A plus B plus C. And so here's a very lovely formula. The area of a triangle is one half little r times the perimeter. And we can, we, you can memorize this, although I, I do not have this memorized. I can close my eyes and just recall this really quickly, this picture and this computation, basically. If you know the area and perimeter of the triangle, you can find the radius of the inscribed circle. We're just going to solve for r here. 2a over p. That comes pretty handy. So again, the area, given the three sides, we can find the area of any right triangle and any isosceles triangle. Therefore, we can find the inscribed circle's radius for these triangles. But if you happen to know the area and the perimeter, then this thing works for any triangle. It's just the area is not that easily easy to determine if the triangle is neither right nor isosceles. Okay, so that's that's one thing I thought you should see. And the other thing that's left is I guess I'm just going to construct this circle just for fun. All right. So we're going to intersect two angle bisectors two angle bisectors. Now, for this angle bisector, we already have one point. It's going to go through the intersection of the two rays. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little arc. And then these two points, uh, this is an isosceles triangle because we use the same radius. So the Angle bisector for this angle is also a perpendicular bisector. So we, we're now going to construct the perpendicular bisector of this line segment, except we just need one point. We already have one. So we're not going to need to do this in, on both sides. We could, but we don't have to. So that's one. We're going to repeat that procedure for this other one. And so where the two angle bisectors intersect each other, that should be the center. But we still don't, don't know what the radius is, right? We don't know exactly how to open the, we, we cannot guesstimate that that's perpendicular. So we still have work to do. We have to sort of figure out, basically, I think what we should do is we should pick any side of the three side and draw a line through this point that's perpendicular to that that side and where that perpendicular intersects the the original side that's the point that's on on the circle so that's what's going to give us the radius so how could we do this i'm going to do this it's less crowded here so perpendicular we're going to have to draw a line through this point that's perpendicular this line 
Well, all we, all we really know is perpendicular bisectors, right? So we have to create a line segment. Check this out. I'm opening the compass. It's too big. Now, this is just tiny parts of a circle, but right now these two points are equally far from this point. Therefore, this point will be contained on the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. That's pretty much it. So we're just gonna construct. Again, we don't need two points. P is, P is already one point on this perpendicular bisector. So I'm just gonna do it on this side. And now uh, connect that with the center of the circle. So this here is the point of tangency. Now we know how to open up the compass. This is very, very gets tested how precise we were. It, it should be a tangent to the other two sides too. Yeah, not bad. Uh, not that good either. See, it, it's missing it there. But that's how the construction goes. Before we go, let me just show you a really cool website. So this is a really cool interactive website. Um, it's interactive because we you can drag around this third point here. I think, no, you can drag all three around if you want. So you can change it. And so we did the perpendicular bisector. So if I say show perpendicular bisectors, then it's drawn in this green line is the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. Clearly this line is a perpendicular bisector for this side. And you can sort of drag it around. You should definitely try to figure out what is what does it take for a regular triangle? Basically, these perpendicular bisectors should also be angle bisectors. And that's a regular triangle right there. And then this center is moving. If I click on show circumcenter, then, well, it's not much change, but that's the center of the superscribed circle. Do you remember the Thales' theorem that says in case of a right triangle, that's the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So here is a right triangle, but this is the hypotenuse, but you can make it a right triangle this way too. And how do you know it's a right triangle? Oh, this is the isosceles right triangle, I guess right there. Uh, this is just isosceles. This is not regular. Now here is a right, right angle. How do you know that the circum center is the midpoint of the hypotenuse? So that is the right angle. Let me make the right angle here. So you can sort of play around with it. And now we can add the circle. That's kind of cool. You can play with it. Uh, what does it mean if it's an isosceles triangle? What does it mean if it's a regular triangle? What does it mean if it's a right triangle? Okay, so I'm gonna take these things out and now we can repeat the whole thing with the angle bisectors. They are shown. And the in circle, which is the center, oops, I mean, in center is the center of the inscribed circle and the in circle is well obviously and then we can play with it again um to have a regular i think that's a little tricky because you have to make the angle bisectors also perpendicular bisectors i guess this looks like it and for right triangles there's nothing really visual going on but algebraically there are going to be some interesting stuff now all together it might be a little bit crowded, but I just want to show you what happens if the triangle is regular. They all coincide. The perpendicular bisectors are the angle bisectors, and the in center and the circumcenter are the same point. Now for right triangles, the circumcenter is the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And if the angle is more than 90, then it's actually outside of the triangle. These are the kind of famous points that we dealt with. Once you have access to this website, you can look at there is more.
Thank you for watching.